It is day three of the G1 Climax 32 tournament, and I'm here to give you my review of the four block matches that took place. Now, normally, you guys know that I rarely have any criticism for New Japan, or any complaints for that matter. Today was a little different. I'd say three out of the four block matches, I did not agree with the booking. I did not agree with who won. Um, and as we get into it, you're gonna hear why I felt that way. So let's start out with the first match. From the D block, Yujiro Takahashi defeated David Finley. Seriously? Yujiro defeated David Finley? Uh. So I have to admit, Yujiro is better in the House of Torture. But I mean, come on. I, I guess someone has to take an L from him. He can't go 0-6. I mean, I guess he could, but yeah, I guess they don't want to do that. Yujiro works better as a henchman. He's just not that convincing enough to be seen as a threat in a one-on-one -on -one match. So as always, we get a very slow-paced match with Yujiro on the offense. And to be honest, I got pretty bored during this match. Sho comes out providing a distraction. Uh, lots of cheating going on, low blows, etc. You know, typical House of Torture shit. Sho cracked David Finley in the head with the wrench which led to Yujiro getting the big juice and stealing two points. So Yujiro is now on the board. David Finley yet to get any points. In the second match, this time we're at the B block. Tama Tonga defeated Chase Owens. And Tama has some unfinished business with Chase. You know, the whole Bullet Club situation, him being one of the originals, Chase Owens turning on him. Actually, the entire Bullet Club turned their back on Tama Tonga. So you would think that this match would be a little interesting because of the personal nature between these two. Um, but no, Chase goes to the outside right away. Cheap shots Jado with a super kick, which gave him enough distraction in order to gain the advantage over Tama Tonga. Again, this match also started boring me a bit, but it did pick up towards the end. Chase is sucking wind like he's all blown up. He gets quite a bit of offense. Maybe he didn't prepare cardio-wise for this tournament. He just seems a little bit out of shape. In my opinion, they killed Tamatanga's momentum when he lost the Never Openweight title after only holding it for one month. Let's get to the end of this match. Tama finished him off with a gun stun and he picked up his first two points. Chase Owens yet to get on the board. All right. Now we go over to the A block. Bad Luck Fale defeated Lance Archer. Now, not to shit on either of these two, but I really had no interest in this match. Lance hasn't been booked properly in about three years. So the entire time he's been in AEW, I feel like he's not being booked properly as the monster heel that he should be. So I guess they're continuing it in New Japan. Maybe they're a little sore that he left for AEW. I don't know. This is a stereotypical big man match. They spend a lot of time on the outside. Uh, once again, I'm bored with this match. All you get is punch here, kick there, slam, you know, etc. Archer is also sucking wind, like he's all blown up. <laughs> but to his credit, he does move around, not like your typical big man. But still, I mean, come on, boys, get your get your cardio up. Both men are fighting on the apron. The ref is counting while they're on the apron. And I was trying to think, has that ever happened before? Do referees normally count when two guys are standing on the apron? I don't think so. But anyway, Lance Archer got knocked off around the count of 17-18 and is not able to get into the ring before the 20 count. So Archer lost on a count out. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Fuck this match. Bad luck Folly gets two points. Lance Archer Yet to get on the board. Lord have mercy. So we get to the main event. And this is a C-block match. Hiroki Goto defeated Tetsuya Naito. So I would consider that an upset. Anyone else? Anybody? Bueller? I'm sure everyone's going to agree that this was truly an upset. This match started out a bit slow. There was a little bit of a feeling out process between the two. But it did pick up the pace a little bit with a basic spot sequence. Naito stalls a bit on the outside, baiting Goto to come out. And then he pounced and he was able to take the advantage. 
Naito is the aggressor and the default heel in this match. And he has right to be a little cocky because he has a five match winning streak against Goto. In the first five to 10 minutes during this match, it's all Naito. Goto starts getting some offense. And I realize it's a very paint by numbers match between these two. Uh, have I mentioned that I hate the Destino finisher? I mean, Naito hits it clean about 20 minutes into this match, and Goto just kicks out of it, just like it's another move. Ugh. Unlike me, the crowd was loving this match. They were clapping along. I saw nothing special about it. I mean, this whole night seemed like a bit of a snooze fest. I will admit, I did like to finish this match. When Naito went for another Destino, Goto was able to stop it, lifts him up, hits him with a Shotokan, which is the suplex into the rock bottom, followed by a GTR, and he gets the three count. So Hiroki Goto picks up his first two points. Tetsuya Naito yet to get on the board. But that's going to be it for today's block action of the 2022 G1 Climax Tournament. I hope that you will return when I get back with night four. See you later, folks. Come get slammed.